We are live, Tim Johnson. Mm -hmm. So I like uh, it. I like to be everybody. live. So much better than the alternative. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It sure is. <laughs> so um, Tim Johnson and I are here with matching brown trout. That's right. Look at that. Funny how <laughs> everybody's got that print. <laughs> uh. So welcome, welcome everyone to to Fly Tying Monday. I have um, my good friend Tim Johnson here, who is uh, just one of one of our favorite people at Orvis. One of my personal favorite people. He's um, he's one of those people that you're really you really get annoyed with because he's so talented. So, um, you know, you, you people probably know Tim as, as an artist because uh, Tim has done that artist series of Helios threes where he has hand burned the, uh, the cork on a special series of Helios threes. And, and you, you've probably seen the, the Timmy grips uh, on Instagram that, that Tim does, um, uh, does custom custom uh, rod grips, but Tim is an artist. Tim also um, works with kids with learning disabilities. Um, but what you may not know about Tim is he's also, uh, he's a guide and a superb fly tire and fly designer. So this guy is, this guy's got way too much talent for his own good. <laughs> he really annoys me. <laughs> but, just, uh, full, just fully addicted, Tom. Just, you know, love fly fishing. <laughs> so I have to, I have to attach to it with every tentacle I can find. Every, uh, yeah, every different well, facet to the sport. Yeah. You got, you got your tentacles out there, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. You sure do. Uh, so, um, we're tying up we're tying uh tim's pattern today it's called the come at me cray and i've been wanting to tie a crayfish pattern um because i don't have a favorite crayfish pattern i usually use a woolly bugger you know something like that uh, uh not uh, not so specific of a crayfish imitation but so many fish eat crayfish pike carp trout especially yeah. big trout uh, survive on, on crayfish um but smallmouth bass largemouth bass uh, what, oh, yeah. what else eats crayfish Catfish. Just, just about yeah anything that lives where crayfish live i mean it's yeah. not an item that you're going to pass by if you're a fish and, and it's yeah. available to you a lot of calories mm -hmm. in when one crayfish and that delicious um, crunch you know yeah <laughs> that delicious crunch so anyway um this is a pattern that I've I've long admired, uh, the come at me cray because it has a it has a, a really unique feature to it, and it's not an easy fly to tie to, and no. I'm gonna struggle I'm gonna I'm gonna struggle today. So that's the reason that that I got Tim to um, to talk me through it. So tell here for tell you. us about tell us about the you. development of this fly. Yeah, well, so the flies that I have developed over the years, and I was I was joking with Tom about this a little bit off the air, uh, is if I have a fly that's hard to tie, but I love it, I think it's really productive. Those are the ones that I send to Orvis, so they can tie them, and then I can start buying them, right? But uh, but when I when I want to create a fly, usually I I don't just you know I don't sit down and say I want to tie a new fly. It's because I'm looking at the natural organism and I'm saying what is it about this thing that makes it unique and identifiable to a fish? And is it well represented by the fly patterns that are out there? So, I mean, I did the candy crane was the same thing because I didn't see a, a translucent crane fly larva. So I wanted a translucent one. So I made the candy crane for this one. It was, there's a lot of great crayfish patterns out there and I don't want to sound like there's not, but one thing I saw that I, I kept seeing, you know, as I'm watching video and film of crayfish and watching them in the wild, the way they act is, you know, we've seen that they kind of crawl forward, but they swim backwards. So a lot of crayfish patterns are tied so that they're reversed. So that as you strip them, you know, their claws are, are backwards, you know, and they're, they're, they're swimming backwards. That's great. I wanted that. But the other thing that I noticed is when they get cornered, they, uh, they'll, they'll get aggressive and they'll throw their claws up, you know, and, and put them out aggressively in this defensive stance toward a fish. You know, you've probably seen photos of a smallmouth in particular cornering one of these guys, they put those claws up and then they get attacked. And, uh, and I hadn't seen that. And that was something that I wanted to, to replicate in a fly. So I wanted a, I wanted a, a stout hook because you can catch some really big fish on these. I wanted to write hook point up because these guys are going to be right along the bottom. Um, and I wanted it to be uh, 
able to have its claws down and forward as you strip it so it swims like a crayfish swims when it's fleeing. But I wanted the claws to come up and out when it's at rest um, in that defensive stature, you know, kind of that come at me, bro. Like that's, that's what it's called, the, uh, the come at me cray. So that's what those, that's what those foam uh, claws do is they allow it to swim backwards, but when it comes to rest, float out like that. And that was the genesis of what I wanted to do. And then the rest are just technical questions. How do we execute it? You know, and, and the more you tie and the more experience you get, the more materials you play with, you start being able to come up with more solutions to whatever you decide your problem is. So I identified my problem. This is what I want my fly to be able to do. Let's see if we can find the technical ability to make it happen. And then the next step is just getting on the water and seeing if the fish actually like it. A very important step, by the way. <laughs> you don't want to, all, all of your work, all, I can't tell you how many times you, you come up with something that you think is brilliant and then the fish say, no, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. Most of my most of my new patterns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, how do you fish this fly? So, um, I fish it uh, again. If I'm just stripping something back, I'm more likely. If it's in constant motion, I'm more likely to go with a woolly bugger, or not necessarily woolly bugger, but something more imitative, something more. Uh, uh, reactionary in my opinion, in terms of when the fish are taking it. Uh, I fish this when I want to be able to fish a crayfish slow. Um, when I want to be able to fish it right on the bottom and I want it to tantalize and engage a fish that might be a little more picky. Um, so if you think about like carp fishing, for example, and we don't actually have it in the catalog, but maybe we should put it in there in kind of a tan or cream color, the eye just molted color. Um, Carp love that. And, and you've seen other carp, uh, carp flies nowadays that have kind of a floating element that extends up from the bottom like these claws do. Um, so if I'm fishing it slow, if I'm fishing it on the bottom, this is the, this is the crayfish fly that I'm going to use. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's kind of what it's designed. And that's not to say you can't strip it to get action. It's designed that way. So I strip, strip, strip to get that action. And then I let it come to rest on the bottom. And we've all had that experience of my flies in motion and it's when it's on the drop or when I hit that pause, that's when it gets attacked. And that's what I found with this guy more often than not. Like it gets hit all different times, but the design of it and the, the it turns out to be true is that when it comes to rest and those claws float up, that's when it gets hit. So that's kind of my pattern. The other thing that I've been thinking about experimenting with on it, because it is uh, essentially, it, it can be made into a floating pattern. The, 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 the amount of float or sink you're going to get on this can be controlled by you if you're tying it yourself. Because if you change the size of that foam claw versus the weight that you have on the bottom, um, it, will, it will have different sink rates or you can make it a floating pattern. If you have big claws, it would just dangle from the surface. So what I haven't done yet, but it's going to be my next step, especially since I just got back from, from Pyramid, Tom, we were talking about fishing at Pyramid Lake. One of the most popular ways to fish there is with a full sink line or a, a very fast sinking head and then fishing floating flies so that your line stays right on the bottom and then you allow these flies to float up. That's something else that I'm gonna experiment with. And now that I'm in Arizona or I'm surrounded by bass, I'm gonna get a lot more opportunity to, to test out these theories of, of kind of fishing the bottom with bass. In, in hot summertime in Arizona, the fish are low, I'm fishing it pretty slow and, and that's where I'm gonna try out that sinking line with, the, with maybe a lighter version of the Kamatme Cray floating up from it. Um, but the, the real answer to the question is for now. And what I have done for the last years is just fishing it kind of low, stripping it on the bottom and letting the weight of the fly, keep it down there in that pose. Can you see this comment here that we just got? Just got, oh, my got Jimmy my... grip today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy, right. Yeah. Yeah. He got a, uh, yeah. I remember burning his has a, his is the one with the fly craft in the background on the surface. Oh, cool. Wow. Brown trout eating a fly and then that. Yeah. Before we forget, give people your uh, website address. Oh yeah. Uh, all of my social media and online presence is Tim Johnson gallery. So the website is Tim Johnson gallery.com. Instagram is at Tim Johnson gallery. And uh, my, my Facebook page is Tim Johnson gallery. So if you, if you Google that, you'll find me one way or the other. And if you want Tim Johnson flies, Orvis sells them. And don't right. forget the giant, the giant fly sale is going on now. So if you want to get go. them, get them now. 20% off, yes. right? I, I think, I think, yeah. And I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be a, a rush on uh, come at me craze after. I, I think especially at the end of the tutorial, people are going to be like, oh, I'll just tie a bunch of these. And then they'll say, yeah, maybe no. I'll buy a bunch of these. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually enjoying it now. I tied a half dozen 
And the first one I literally threw in the trash can. Um, yep. I didn't even try to salvage it. Yeah. I cut the, I cut the of eyes off and, and saved them, and it went right in, in the hook, and it went right in the trash, the rest of it, because it was horrible. And then by the, by the third or fourth one, I'm a little happier with it, but still I want, I want you to talk you through it. So why don't we start? Sure. And I think, we'll start with the, I think we'll start with the claws um, because that's the, I, I would say that's the first step, right? Is to, uh, is to make the claws. Yeah. It's part, I consider it part of your material prep if you were going to tie. Yeah, material, yeah, the material prep. So I've got some claws here that I made, um, but I'm going to make one with you talking me through it because I'm not, there's a claw there. Yeah. That show that show okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um you recommend that somebody cuts uh about a quarter inch wide piece of foam, right? Mm-hmm. And, a, an and, about an in, and about an inch long. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is the part that I'm not very good at, but I'm not very not very artistic or handy. So <laughs> you cut, you cut, <laughs> what are you laughing at? You cut like a cut like this, right? First, mm -hmm. like that, about yep. what, about three quarters of the way down? Now, so this is, this is where we get into the, uh, you know, Go your own way in terms of your artistic style. I take I take probably half to, to two thirds of that underneath space, so I leave okay. enough for it to attach well. So um, right to about there, maybe. Sure, sure, that's fine. And uh, yes, and and make an arc in there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, this is the part that I have trouble with. I got some curved blade scissors, which and you start at the corner, right? Sure, and you cut. And what, what we're cutting now is the underside of that claw. We're cutting this right. part of the claw for people who. So right about to there, right? How does yeah. that look? Looks good. Okay. Looks and then good. you and then you come in from the other side, right? And you mm -hmm. and you want to round this part off too, don't you? This corner down here. So so I want I want the top and the underside to be rounded, and I only want the flat part to be where it's gonna attach to the arm. Right. That that the, part right the there, right? Exactly. That part. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do this part first. So I just round, kind of mirror that, mirror that, like mm -hmm. that. That yeah. doesn't look so bad. And no, then, good. and then I, you know, round this off here, right? Mm -hmm. So there's my claw. Yeah. There you go. That's a good looking okay. claw. All right. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. And then, um, and then. So you got your claw cut out, and then you take a piece of um, uh, uh, squirrel zonker, uh, mm -hmm. fox squirrel zonker. Uh, it doesn't work that well with rabbit. You really need, you really need. Um, I found you're right. You really need fox squirrel. Yeah, and fox or pine pine squirrel works well too. Pine squirrel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pine squirrel is what I meant. Yeah, pine. Yeah, and you. Is that about right there, or should I? Mm -hmm. I that okay. looks good to me. And and yeah. again, you know, choo choose your taste. Ex explore the studio space, people. Try try what it, you like, but that's you're doing it how I do it. And then you wet it, and you cut most of the fur off the bottom part. Yeah. So the the part that's going to be that's the arm right. is going to be right. that short trimmed fur, and then right, and then that part that Tom's leaving is going to be the underside. Of the claw, and I like to I like to make it I like to make them long just just so that you have enough you know, I mean you have to want you want these long enough so that they have some wiggle in them right? Yeah, yeah. So like that, how's that look? It looks good to me. Okay, and then the part that um, I shouldn't be allowed to do <laughs> is to super glue the claw onto the fur. And you want to pick you want to pick a, a zonker strip. Uh, I assume that that has a fairly wide. You know, th some of these are thinner than others. You want a fairly flat, wide piece of um, hide on the back, right? So you can get the the claw yeah. attached. 
the the more uh, surface the, area you have connecting the claw to the uh, strip, the, the more secure it's going to be, right? So yeah. Now, do you um, do you put the glue on the claw or do you put it on the on the fur? Uh, I don't know that there's a, a right way, but I've okay. in, in the past I've put it on the. Uh, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I think I put it on the strip and then I put the the claw into okay. it. But somebody may correct me if there's a better way on that. That's just what I've done. I'm getting my glue going here. My super glue is. I just used this and it's already closed. So yeah, so when I'm doing this and my fingers are going to be close to that glue, I just use that tuft of fur as a handle so that the uh, so that the strip mm -hmm. is above my fingers, but I don't necessarily have to put it right next to where the glue is going to go, just like you're doing. Yeah. I, uh, I just I just use this glue. It's not coming through. Mm. Those little those little tubes are are great for putting glue in place, but you do have to cut them back occasionally. They don't always, I'm going to have to cut that off. Cut the tip off. There. That should release it. Yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. And then put some glue on there, like so. Mm -hmm. And you attach that flat piece. Press it. Try not to glue your fingers to it, and there you go. That's right. So there's a claw. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, I didn't like. I didn't. I, I don't particularly like that. That really green. I I, I ordered olive phone, and that's mm -hmm. not my idea of olive. So what I did was with my claws was I I colored them with a marker so that they match the. That's nice. that's yeah. and that's what I did with my with my first ones too that I was making until I found some foam colors that I really liked. I it was yeah. each one was colored. In fact, I may have put on my original recipe that I sent to Orvis. I didn't have a for the rust colored version. I didn't have a foam color that I really liked. And so what I said yeah. is just use the cinnamon foam. I think is the stuff that we got, and then I colored it, and that's what I prescribed. Right. So. so anyway, there's your claw. And the cool thing about this is because this piece is flexible, and it'll be more flexible when it's wet. When when these things are um, on the fly and the fly comes to rest, the floating part comes up, and you mm -hmm. get that defensive posture in the claw. So that's really cool. So make my advice is to make a few claws first, um, mm -hmm. just what I did, and um, you know get get that part aside, and then go with uh, go with the rest of the time. So let's go to the close up here. And here's one. Here's one I tied earlier. It's not bad. No, it looks good. It's not. A, it's it's not a Timmy. It's not Timmy good, but it's <laughs> it's Tommy. It's Tommy good, not Timmy good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't right. let Tim Flagler adopt that phrase, man. You don't wanna. Oh yeah. yeah All right. So up on you and there. you can see you can see what happens that these foam these foam claws will will come up. When it's at rest, I actually tied those. I should have tied those the other way, right? The foam should be on top. Well, you've you've got it inverted right now, so you you tied it right. You've got oh right, right, oh right, right, yeah, inverted. I get confused. All right. <laughs> so I didn't have you recommended some drop shot hook. Oh, I yeah. I didn't have any of those. So I'm using a, a Gamagatsu B10S. That's a great hook. And. I like to start it at. An, I'm going to go to the other camera. I like to start the hook at uh, at an angle, mm -hmm. like this, because um, because you're going to be tying down around the bend. Yep. Focus that. There we go. Okay. So you start your thread, probably anywhere you want. I would imagine. I start in the middle. My scissors are way over here. And then uh, you get yourself a couple antennae, which are going to be 
rubber legs. Uh, kind of a, I've got these olivey silicone legs. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to cut one piece because I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold this. And you're going to, you're going to trim these. I make them long so that I can trim them, fold it over there, and then wind back over it. Yeah. Just like, just like cutting hair, you can always take it off. You can't put it back on. Yeah. So. And then you want to go down. Wait, you want to go halfway down the bend with these, right? You yeah. want to go all the way to there, right? Yep. Yep. So that's, and, and again, uh, you can experiment with a little further. My first gen ones, I took it almost all the way around that bend because I wanted as much of that kind of thorax leaning yeah. up from the bottom, right? I want them to be really curving up and getting aggressive. Uh, so, yeah, feel so free to, go, to try them out to ways. Go, you think I can go a little farther? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, I think you can go a little farther than that. I mean, you don't want to interfere with your hook set or any of that stuff. You can take it back right. a little bit further if you like. Okay. The, the, that's one of the great things about the B10S, though, is you're not going to have yeah. any problems with hook sets on that thing. It has right. plenty of gape. And it gives you more, it actually gives you more room to to uh, do stuff. Yep. Put in eyes yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. So now we have to cut the, uh, now we have to cut the, uh, Flash, not the flashback. The uh, thin skin. The the thin skin. And I've already cut a piece of thin skin. And you want it. I, I found about a hook gap, maybe a little less. I don't know about you, Tim. In terms a of width. In terms of width, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that depends on your on your size of your gap there. But yeah, hey, this is, this is another one of those things you want to experiment with a little, a little bit and adjust for size. I, I had a yeah. measurement that I wrote down for the recipe and I think I was using, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't. And then uh, I find this stuff easier to tie in if I, if I make a little cut in the end of it. Yeah. Give yourself a taper. Yeah. A little taper to cut in. And then I'm going to go to the uh, other and I'm going to turn this hook upside down. And I'm going to, I'm going to really invert it here. Mm -hmm. I found that it's easier. I'm going to go up to. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is where it gets awkward because you're tying it upside yes. down. But this is the part of the fly where you have that hook point in your way. So it's going to be the right. most awkward part. It is. Yeah. It is. So I found I kind of start on the near side and catch that. Uh, I tried the other way. Maybe this will look better. Catch that point and then, yeah, and you have to, oops. Johnson. <laughs> this fly is annoying. This is one of the <laughs> hardest parts I've had. Yep. You got that hook point right in your way. It's crazy. And then you got the shank blocking your rotation. Yeah. And then, of course, then you got to wind up against. And you want to wind this all the way back. And I find it pulling it toward me a little bit helps. I don't know about you if that's where how you do it. Against uh, against my wrap rotation. Yeah. Is that gonna yeah, that'll that'll be okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna and I'm gonna wrap that right up against those legs. Yeah, I think that's good enough. I think that's gonna do it. And then, no, I'm going to keep it inverted because I want to put, I got to put my black eyes in there. 
Oh, and then and then I find that I definitely at this point definitely want that want that hook inverted like that. Okay, I'm gonna change this camera angle a little bit. And now I'm gonna take a pair of black plastic eyes, which are these things here. You can um, you could use burnt monofilament eyes if you wanted to, but um, you know, just a pair of plastic or, or some sort of lightweight eyes. And is this the right spot, Tim, to put these? Yep, just just a little bit below that insertion point of where the uh, thin skin is, so that you can yeah, but okay. above where your legs are going to go. So that's that looks right good. there, right there. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I find if you're going to tie this, you want the large size plastic eyes. It's hard to get the larger size. So I'm, I'm figurating around those, and then I'm going to, huh, this is fun, coming around the base just like you would any eyes to help secure them. Mm -hmm. And then I know you put a drop of super glue here, right? Yeah, I've gotten to where I'm putting super glue all over the place nowadays to, to lock things in place. <laughs> all right. Especially if you, if, you if you invest a lot of time into a fly, I want it to last for basically forever now. <laughs> I, I know I'm going to glue my fingers to this fly. I know I am. Okay. <laughs> and now... Oh, don't, don't glue too much finger. That becomes bait fishing at, a, at some point if you glue too much finger. Yeah, right. So, stay legal. <laughs> and... And now you use a dubbing, I guess you use like a wiggly hair blend or something like that. Yeah, it's um, yeah. when I originally tied it, it was like a what they call the sand crab dubbing actually. But yeah, it has that kind of rubbery. Uh, and there's all kinds of different versions of this that you can find now. Cohen makes some good, you know, carp yeah. dub that works well for this. Just whatever you like. That's yeah. There you go. I, I didn't have I didn't have any dubbing, but I found this wire, this um, uh, EP, uh, Enrico Puglisi wire, which oh. um, is a is about the right color, and it's got it's got some nice rubber legs in there. Yeah. So yeah. and I don't have to tie in any dubbing loops, which I hate. That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, that's good. I, I found that it works okay. I think if I had if I had some dubbing with with rubber legs in it, I would I would use it but I don't. So do you tie, um, I think I'm going to tie this in, in behind the eyes. Oh, wrong camera. Sorry. I'm going to tie this behind the eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like that you're using something different too, because I, I want people to, Sometimes people get the idea that the recipe that this guy designed the fly with is the end all be all, and that's how it must be tied. But your fish know better than my fish what they want, right? So well, experiment you with your improv different colors. You need to improvise too, based on what you have around, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this you this know, fly was it started as a real improvisation. Uh, it, I didn't have quite a few of the things that I that I decided to put into the final version, but it it made a a, a functional a functional fly that worked really well. And that's what gave me the desire to, to really get down to the nitty gritty and find my favorite materials for it. But the first version yeah. that I fished was, was what I had around. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to wind this starting right back against those antennae. And I'll probably make maybe only one, maybe two turns there. Trying to keep everything in place. Mm -hmm. mm. There, that looks good. And then come in the front of the eyes and tie it off. And actually, the nice thing is, I could just leave this here. Mm -hmm. And then I can use that for the rest of the body. There you go. You got a little bit easier version going on now. Yeah. Yeah. And if then. If such a thing can be said. Then you take your thin skin, and this is tricky, and you make your head by pulling that over 
and coming down right behind the eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And a couple of turns because you're just gonna you just you're gonna continue to use that. Yeah. Let's see if I can show people what it looks like from the top. So that's what it looks like from the top. So you got the eyes sticking out. You got a little head formed there. And now you're just going to get that thin skin out of the way. And you're going to get the this other stuff out of the way. And then you're going to turn it. I could have rotated my vice, too. Oh, didn't have to do that, but not everybody has a rotary vice. That's true. So I'm going to get it back in there. I can't even find that hook. It's all fuzzy in there. <laughs> it's, it, this is a hairy beast. Yeah. When you're in the middle of okay. it. Okay. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to just get that stuff out of the way, and then I'm going to come up to, you call it the apex of the bend, and that's a... That's a good yeah. description, right about right about there, well, right, right where the so, bend yeah. starts to keel over. Come comes over to the shank. Now with the with the old version of the uh, with the actually, I'll just show you really quick, Tom. You've got the B10S, which has a much flatter shank than the yeah. uh, than the one. I'll see if yeah. you guys can see this. This is the this is the 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 version oh, that I originally yeah. tied it on, and you can see it's much yeah. more curved. And so when yeah. I was saying apex, yeah. I was talking right here. And it left a long right thorax. Above the, so you can still use the, the apex point. there. What's that? Yeah, kind of, kind of right, right above, above the point. point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so it just depends on how long you want your thorax to be. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And then we're going to tie in a pair of red uh, solid metal eyes. Heavy. Heavy yeah. eyes. And I have to ask you a question after I get this tied in. So this is going to sure. be on the top of the hook because this fly is going to ride inverted. You want the hook up, obviously. So you got to put a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. There's too much stuff in here, Tim. Too much stuff. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you buy them, man. Uh, <laughs> take care of, let Orvis take care of it for you. Yeah, I'm too proud. I'm too proud. <laughs> I have to tie my own. Dude, here's I'm the not... great thing about what we're doing right now is I've had a bunch of people say, hey, Tim, will you make a tutorial of this fly for me? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And years well, later, you don't have to. I haven't done it. So now Tom's doing it for me. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't have to. That's right. Okay. So we're going to put super glue on again, right? Yeah, I like to. Okay. All right. Okay. And now I have a question for you, Mr. Johnson. Sure. You you put metal eyes or lead eyes, whatever, um, here, and then up front you put bead chain. Why the difference? Mm -hmm. Why don't you put why don't you put silver um, solid eyes in the front? Abs absolutely something you could do. It just goes uh -huh. back to that question we were talking about earlier about how much weight do you want on your fly? Um, okay. So what I need is enough weight to get it down. And with the yeah. version that I tied originally, these eyes right here really accomplished that. So what the other ones did is just kind of, when you hit this heavier part, that's the pivot point, they just ensured that the other side came down well. So I have foam lifting on one side. It doesn't take very much weight to, to tilt the other side down. Yeah. So it just made it okay. made for a lighter fly. Okay, so you that could still put well. uh, solid metal eyes in both positions on this. Absolutely, and I and I have okay. done I have done that way. Okay. So you can okay. do it either way. Okay, all right. Uh, now we're gonna get everything, all this junk out of the way. We're gonna tie in our claws. I'm I'm half tempted to stick that shell back on the hook point, but I don't want to create a. I don't want to create a uh, a hole in it. So I'm going to come back halfway between the black eyes and the red eyes, and I'm going to tie in my claws, right? Mm -hmm. And 
they should be perpe they should be perpendicular to the uh, I mean roughly I, I I can't them a little bit what will be forward on the fly backward on the fly right now okay and foam side down facing the hook point right as it's as it's established now the foam would be down for us yeah okay yeah and then put so put one and make sure it's long enough so you get some wiggle in there some play yeah Is that long enough maybe a little longer Oh, it's super glued. I guess that's where it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one tied in there. I don't have to use much thread here. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to the other side and in the opposite direction. And they don't even have to be the same length because crayfish claws are not always the same length. Yeah. But for our purposes, we want them the same. Is that going to be enough? Um, uh, Larry's asking why the multiple sets of eyes. Tim? <laughs> you want me to take that one, Tom? I'll take that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, the monofilament eyes or the black plastic eyes that you have at the front, those are purely decoration. So we can ignore those. You can leave them off if you want to. The, the two sets of eyes on the bottom um, are just to ensure that stabilization quickly of having that pivot point on the heavy eye and then that lighter set of eyes or bead chain or as heavy as you want them to be to tilt it down and get this thing established and sturdy. Uh, because when I strip it and it stops, I want it to set up really quickly in that, in, that, in that format of having feet on the ground basically for a crayfish and then those claws can come up. Um, so I tried it with a, a lot of crayfish patterns just have the one set like this does. Um, I tried it that way and I just found it better with the, with that second set, just got everything established really quickly because I want it to kind of almost snap into position. Um, instead of doing kind of slow turnover or a slow tilt down, I want it to come right into position because it's almost an aggressive, I mean, it is an aggressive move these crayfish make when they get into that stance, they move right into it because they're trying to scare that fish off as their last ditch effort. So the two sets of, uh, of dumbbells or dumbbell bee chain on that reverse side of, or the outside of the hook is just to to get that that set up in that uh, establishment the way that I wanted to really quickly and and you you know yours may vary if you're doing a lighter fly uh, you can you can try leaving that second set off that's nearer to the eye. Okay. So, thank you, Tim. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the. Uh, Cut off the stuff there. You don't have to be too neat because you're going to cover this up. Make sure that your your dubbing and your your thin skin are back there always. And now we're going to put in legs. And we're going to use. We're going to take three three strands of our rubber leg material. I only got three left on this thing. <laughs> so I got three strands. And we're going to, and these are shorter than the antennae. So I don't know. I just put them like that, Tim, about that angle. Sure. You, you can have them move them forward. You can have them splayed more out. Uh, yeah, the way it works well. Okay. So you can just come. Uh, way too much stuff going on here, Tim. There's so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There's so much stuff. Yeah. So you just take a couple turns there and then fold these the other side back and wind on top of those. so that you have six legs sticking out and then trim those oops i'm gonna have to do something about that Let me put this back and i gotta come back over those legs to get them to lay properly there we go okay 
All right. You've got, a, you've got a wire, you've got a wire cord dubbing brush too. So where you lay that thing down, it's going to have a lot of say about where those legs go. Right. And then I'm going to come. Oh, come on. Stay put, legs. They won't stay put. I want it. I want them to stay put now. And then I'm going to come right forward of the red eyes. And I need a piece of I need a piece of wire. Yeah. I need a, I need a piece of bright bright green. This could be olive, it could be any color you want, but we're going to tie a piece sure. of wire right in front of these eyes. And get it back. Yeah, get it right back against those eyes. And then wind it forward. And then I like to cover the shank and then come back a little bit. Don't don't put your forward eyes too close to that hook eye. Uh, because uh, I find that then you have trouble. Yeah. Oh, these the basic principle of all flies is we first mistake is to crowd the hook eye, you know, when you get to yeah. the end of your fly. So, yeah. Yeah. So second pair of eyes could be a uh, B chain. I'm using B chain here, but you could use uh, another set of another set of uh, lead eyes or metal eyes. And this is just to balance the fly to keel it, help keel it. Mm -hmm. I assume, right, Tim? Am I right? Am That's I right. right. Yep. This, this is right? this is pure am, function right here. Am I am I right or am I right? Am I right or am I right? Am I right? right. Am I right or am I right? Okay. And then come in front of those eyes. And some more super glue. Tom, <laughs> uh, or actually, this is probably for Tim. Two things. Will the glue on the claws hold the foam after a few fish? And um, Brian uh, went fishing is also saying that he loves your artwork, Tim. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, the glue, in my experience, has been very solid. It's it's held up really, really well. The, the weakness of this fly, um, I, I have foam get chewed and torn sometimes more than I will have it get separated from the uh, from the leather of that pine squirrel. So yeah, the glue seems to hold up really well. Great. Uh, all right. Now make sure that your thin skin is pushed back and make sure that you don't bind your claws under. Oh, this is, this is where it looks the worst, but we're close. <laughs> you got to believe you got to believe you're close on this fly when you're at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and now I can hopefully get those legs to stay put, keep the wire out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the dubbing on top of the legs. There, now the legs are in place. There you go. And then come forward and make sure that you don't trap your wire. Now, if you were, if you were using a dubbing loop here, you would probably brush this. But this stuff, yep. I I have found doesn't doesn't seem to need to be brushed. And you come up to the eyes, and I take two turns behind the eyes. And then just come across in front of the eyes. I don't because this brush is so thick. I I don't uh, I don't take I don't take a a full turn in front of the eyes because otherwise it crowds stuff. Sure. And then cut that off carefully. And at this point, if you're using this brush, you're going to have a lot of fibers in the eye, so you may want to just wind those back. You can trim them, too, with your scissors. Keep it clean up there by the eye. Okay. Now i got to turn her over. So here we go. 
And now that thin skin that's been patiently sitting back there <laughs> is now ready. Ooh, and it's pretty well centered too. I'm happy with All that. Right. Mm. That was the your that was your pulling it back toward you against the wrap that set you up for yeah, that. Yeah, and and take a gentle turn over there, otherwise it'll fold too much. And then I like to pull it back a little bit just so it doesn't get so it doesn't stick out over the eye. And then take a couple of good firm turns with your thread. And this remaining thin skin is going to be the tail of your crayfish. And you can cut that wherever you want it. And that's that, that's that tail. Now, technically, Tim Johnson, mm -hmm. when a crayfish swims, mm -hmm. this thing gonna folds under this way. Up under but Yep. I couldn't figure out how to make that. Too. And and this is one well, that's this is one that's lying on the bottom, so it, it would have that tail. Right, uh, right. Those are two. Like those that. are two different phases, and and I try to be able to fish right. both of them with this, so it swims uh -huh. backwards. But yeah, when it comes to rest, that tail will be more splayed out. And then I'm just going to trim the corners off here because that tail is kind of fan shaped on a on a crayfish. And then the last step is to take your your wire if you can find it <laughs> and i find with this that you want to take a gentle turn and then pull straight down that tends to trap fewer uh body fibers and this is to get your segmentation of the the back of the crayfish and you can actually and then take two turns in front or three just for security and tie off the wire. With a couple turns, maybe three for good luck. <laughs> and then cut the wire. Whip finish. Probably a drop of super glue on there too. Yeah. <laughs> super glue, super glue. Super glue, super glue. <laughs> oh, and that, that tail acts as a guard to keep from getting super glue in the eye. Yep. Keep your eye clean. Ah, very clever. I bet you didn't think of that. Oh, of course. Super intentional. Uh <laughs> yeah. the and then factor. um <laughs> And then, um, then you want to, they want to brush it. I found these great, uh, this is a, this is a, a tool for removing, removing eye goobers from a poodle that I got at a pet store. <laughs> but it is, it is. It's got a brush on one nice. side and a wire on the other. I got it in a pet store and it makes, it's a great, uh, dubbing picker. I'm going to pick that dubbing out from between those wire ribs and then turn it over. And this doesn't need too much. This brush, see, I can brush it like this. I can brush it like yeah. that. And then the final step is a simple one. Well, first of all, clean out the eye. Cauterizing tool would be really handy here, but it might it might uh, cauterize my tail into oblivion. And then just flatten the dubbing on the bottom, right, Tim? Yeah, uh, and that's that's functional as well. I want it to be able to kind of rest on those right. eyes. I don't want it yeah. to be tipping off to the side. So let's uh, let's take this out and look at it with the. I don't I don't like the way those legs are or those claws. I don't well I guess they will come up. Let's take a look at it. The antennae are probably too long. 
I'm going to trim those antennae a little bit, just a little bit. And there, yeah, yeah, I should have made those arms longer. I think it'll still, it'll they'll still come up. Mm -hmm. I think they'll still come up, but, uh, oops, get that stuff out of the way. There. So there is your come at me yeah. cray. Yeah. It's good. Nice and buggy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a great and, and, looking fly. Like, like really you're saying, great. you can adjust the length of those arms. You can adjust the size of the claws relative to the weight of the fly and just kind of tweak it for the fishing conditions that you're, that you're trying to make it work for. Um, right. Yeah, got her. Cool. You know, Tom, we were talking about, you know, get, you know, getting a little jazz like with your material selection and how you make a fly. And we talked about how when I first made this fly, I was just using the materials on hand. I, I remembered since then that the first time I tied this fly, was actually uh, at an Orvis rendezvous in my hotel room, and so really? the only the only materials I had with me are whatever I brought with me to that rendezvous, right? So it's just kind of a smaller tying pack, but you know, I was just trying to brainstorm it and get the creative juices with all these other guides around me, and and you know, this is back when we had the fly tying competition every year at the rendezvous, and yeah, so this this actually sprang out of that with just what I had in that hotel room, and and uh, and the come at me cray came out of that that process with a little bit of cinnamon foam that I colored with a marker and, and, you know, built it up. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta be creative. When you see a recipe, don't feel like you gotta stick rigidly to it. Make it I your own. A lot of, make it work I for see your a fish. lot of comments here that if people are going to try it, somebody's, uh, somebody's making claws right now. <laughs> We're already deep into cloud production. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Neville wants to know, did you, did you ever, or would you add a rattle to this? I haven't. Um, and th mm -hmm. that's a really good question. Now that I'm, now that I'm down here in Arizona, I'm fishing a lot more warm water species. That seems to be something that bass and other organisms are looking for more of that sound. And so I'm, that's something mm -hmm. I'm going to start experimenting with more. So something I would do for sure. Haven't tried it yet though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where would, where would we fit it though, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, there's enough crap on this fly already. I'm not putting <laughs> rattles on it. <laughs> I don't want one more piece of stuff on this fly. <laughs> he doesn't want a single drop of super glue more than it already has on it. <laughs> you know what you could do is you could tie on four bead chain eyes instead of two. Let them stick out a little bit. That would rattle. Yeah, huh. I've t I've done that in bonefish flies before, um, tying That's in four four yeah, yeah. chain. But then it it wouldn't look right because it would be sticking out of the fly. It wouldn't look right. But anyway. um, I'm gonna leave the rattle off. Um, but that's a cool fly, Tim, and, and I want to really if thank you, you for that, whoever asked that question. Though, I'd I'd love them to try it out and report back and let me know how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To hear. Let us know. So if you whoever asked that, worth. you put one in. Put one in. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. And we want to sign. I, was we want a, I don't uh, know if I mentioned it. Go ahead. So we were talking over each other there for a second. I was just no, going to go say ahead, that go before you had mentioned, you had mentioned that, uh, and I can't remember if we said it on the broadcast or not, but uh, I've, I've had a lot of requests to do a tutorial of this fly, uh, and then, you know, I, I finally have – Tom doing a form for me, so I dodged that one. And so now if I can get you to experiment with the rattle on it, then I, I can dodge that bullet too, and I can just reap the benefits. Yeah, so who this is, is great. that keep person? You guys who keep is, experimenting. And who fix my is flag. that person? And what we want is we want you to tie, uh, we want you to tie uh, two dozen without rattles and two dozen with rattles, and we want you to fish for four right. or five seasons, and we want 95% uh, confidence limits um, on a, a scientific uh, analysis, data analysis of whether we yep. should bother putting a rattle in there, because I'm I'm not I'm not going there. And I want to I want to see, I wanna see your I want to see your chi squared analysis. Send it to me and Tom. Use Qualtrics if you need to. Oh, and double that number of flies because you're going to need to send some to uh, to me and Tom to experiment with. Also okay, so two dozen of each. Two dozen of each. Same color. Got to be the same color. Rattle <laughs> and no rattle. Who is that? 
Who is that? Ah, Neville. Control. Neville Broad. Control Remember the variables. That name. Remember Neville. He's going to do the Write experiment down. for us. <laughs> You've been commissioned, Neville. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah. It's like the people who want to know which is better, a clinch or improved clinch. And when I found out I'd have to tie 300 knots um, just to get a just to get um, confidence limits on it, I said, no, you guys do it. I'll, I'll use a plain clinch knot and you go ahead and you do the test or you send me the knots and I'll I'll get them analyzed. <laughs> Neville go. says, OK, guys. <laughs> yes, he's on it. All right. Would you put you ever put UV resin over the foam for durability? Yeah, I think that would affect buoyancy, but there is uh, you I should know this, that. Tim. There is always a question about UV resin in these fly tying tutorials. People want to use UV resin for everything. Yeah, I, I, I hear why. you. I mean I started using UV resin. That was the come at me craig when you know I was trying to find a translucent uh I'm sorry, not the come at me craig, the the candy crane. I was trying to find a translucent crayfly larva, couldn't find it, had to design one. And I went through a process of trying epoxy, uh, which for a kid with ADHD is frustrating because it takes time right, to, to make that thing set up. So this was back when UV wasn't really being used for fly time, but it was being used for weighter repair. And so I got this mm -hmm. weighter repair, you know, UV resin. And I said, I can build that up on a fly instantaneously. So, so I'm on board with the UV, but I, uh, I use it where I think it, it does a lot of good. This mice shrimp pattern that's also translucent, uh, as well as that that candy crane. But I don't know about putting on the claws here. It'd make them look shiny and pretty, but um, maybe that's another one for Neville to try out. I don't know. Yeah, and and D asks how are the claws made? D, if you go back and watch this on the archive, either in YouTube or the Orvis Facebook channel, um, we created a set of claws at, at the beginning. You might have missed the beginning. And Ed, I'm with you. Trilene knot for for bigger for bigger flies. I'm a huge fan of the trilene knot it's very strong that's my i don't use it for trailing knot. i don't use it for stronger i don't do you use it for crowd flies i don't use it for like little stuff but um well i use it for i i use it all the time actually and it's one of those things yeah. where i'm a believer in not necessarily one knot over the other knot but if you get good mm -hmm. at tying a knot and you feel like you're tying it to full strength stick with it and the trilene knot is my yeah i tie it perfectly every yeah. time so that's the one i do more often than not unless i'm doing a loop knot or something like that obviously yeah, the trilene knot's an awesome, an awesome knot, definitely. Um, all right, everyone. Well, if, are there any more questions for Tim or myself um, before we uh, before we let you go? Yes, D. I think you missed the beginning, and um, and we showed you how to make a. We made a pair of claws at the beginning, so yeah. That's the hardest part. Yeah, check out those claws. If, if anybody's watching this later and has a question about the fly, they can always, uh, you know, message me on on Facebook at Tim Johnson Gallery on Instagram if that's where you are at Tim Johnson Gallery, and uh, I'll let you know whatever I know about the fly. And if it's anything oh, that I haven't tried you're yet, a I'll, glutton, you're a glutton I'll contact for punishment. You're <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> you're a glutton for punishment, man. Like your your social media is going to be blowing up tonight. <laughs> All right. uh, I'll try to get some art done too while it blows up. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone. And Tim, thank you for taking time away from your artwork. I know you're super busy right now and um, really appreciate you. It's always good to see your face and talk to you. And um, um, well, thank you for talking me through this. Always got time to hang out with Tom. Hey, my pleasure. You did a great job, and I am at your at your beck and call, Tom. You're my my favorite dude to hang out with digitally. So just let me know. <laughs> oh, oh wow! <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> All right, Tim. high praise. Thank you very much. Bye, bye, everybody, and um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for the great questions. We really appreciate you asking some really really good questions um, about this fly and about fishing it, and. Um, Neville, thank you for volunteering to do the statistical test. And we'll, for uh, science, we'll thank you. you for it. Yeah. And stay healthy, everybody. Stay safe. And tomorrow, um, Jim Kirsch and I are going to be talking about wading boots. So uh, uh, specifically the new BOA, uh, the pro wading boot with BOA laces. We're going to be talking about the BOA laces and just wading boots in general, studs and
felt and rubber and all that stuff. So tune in at the same time tomorrow. Um, and um, Jim Kershaw and I will be uh, trying to answer your questions about wading boots. Bye, everybody. Say goodbye, Tim. Goodbye, Tim. <laughs> <laughs>